The Bimini Islands, small, sun-soaked and ringed with crystal waters, are often thought of as just another picturesque stop in the Bahamas, but beneath their white sands and shallow banks lies a mystery that has puzzled archaeologists for decades. Who were the first people to truly call Bimini home? Were they just Taino-speaking Lucayans arriving in the final centuries before European contact? Or did an even older group walk these shores long before recorded history? New breakthroughs in ancient DNA research are challenging everything we thought we knew about the settlement of these islands. Before we start, I'm on a road to get 1,000 subscribers as a small channel. If you want to help me, please subscribe. Bimini sits at the western edge of the Bahamas archipelago, just 80 kilometers off the coast of Florida. With its low-lying coral islands, freshwater springs and strategic location between the Gulf Stream and the Lucayan Sea, it would have been an attractive stopover or settlement site for seafaring peoples. Traditionally, historians and archaeologists believe that the Lucayan Tainos were Bimini's first true inhabitants, arriving sometime between AD 700 and 1000. These people were part of the larger Taino cultural sphere that stretched from Hispaniola and Cuba through the Northern Caribbean. They left behind tools, ceramics, and burial sites that matched Lucayan materials found throughout the Bahamas. For decades, this model held Bimini was a latecomer in the broader Caribbean migration story, settled during the final phase of pre-Columbian expansion. But recent evidence has begun to crack this narrative, suggesting that the Lucayans may not have been the first to leave a human imprint on these islands. While the archaeological record in Bimini is sparse compared to larger islands, several clues have hinted at a deeper past. Some early researchers reported artifact types and skeletal remains that didn't match classic Lucayan material culture. These included rougher tools, different burial postures, and unusual cranial shapes that suggested a possibly older or different group had once occupied the area. Scholars noted similarities with the so-called Sibone, or Archaic peoples, who once inhabited parts of Cuba and other greater Antillean islands before the rise of the Taino. These Sibone were foragers, shellfish gatherers and coastal wanderers, often living in caves and lacking ceramics. While no clear Sibone settlements have been uncovered in Bimini, the suggestion that such groups could have passed through or briefly settled the islands raised intriguing possibilities. Were these earlier inhabitants later absorbed or displaced by the Lucayans? And could ancient DNA offer a way to finally identify their genetic traces? To investigate these lingering mysteries, a team of researchers turned to ancient DNA extracted from human remains buried across several Bahamian islands, including Bimini. Most of the samples dated between AD 700 and 1600, squarely within the Lucayan period, Scientists focused on petrous bones and tiny ear ossicles, structures known to preserve DNA even in humid tropical conditions. Using next-generation sequencing and hybridization capture techniques, they generated full genome and mitochondrial profiles from 31 individuals. While no confirmed pre-Lucayan skeletons from Bimini were tested, the data from this wider sample pool provided valuable context. The team compared these ancient genomes to modern indigenous populations from the Caribbean, Central America and Northern South America, searching for patterns of ancestry, isolation and mixture. What they found was a complex genetic landscape, with maternal lineages hinting at diverse origins, and a few genetic signatures that didn't quite fit the expected Taino profile. These anomalies set the stage for a surprising discovery. When the results came in, the paternal DNA told a fairly unified story. Most male individuals carried haplogroup QM902 or QZ781, both consistent with what's found in indigenous South American and Taino-descended populations. But the maternal lineages were a different matter. Mitochondrial DNA showed significant diversity, including haplogroups A2C1B and C1D1, typical of Taino peoples but also a rare variant called B2E. This haplogroup is extremely uncommon in the Caribbean, but has been found sporadically in parts of South America and Central America. Even more intriguingly, one of the C1D1 samples didn't match any known branches. It appeared to be a newly discovered sublineage unique to the Bahamas. These outlier lineages suggest that the Lucayan gene pool was more complex than previously believed, possibly influenced by contact with older or neighbouring populations. 
Whether through migration, intermarriage, or replacement, the Lucayans of Bimini may have carried within them the genetic echo of peoples whose presence predates their own. The presence of rare maternal haplogroups like B2E and a novel C1D branch sparked a fresh hypothesis. Could Bimini and its neighbouring islands have once hosted an earlier wave of settlers, perhaps related to Sibine or other archaic Caribbean foragers? While no direct skeletal evidence from pre-Lucayan individuals has been found in Bimini so far, these genetic clues suggest there may be deeper layers of human history waiting to be uncovered. It's possible that early ceramicless populations reached the islands during brief climatic windows or followed coastal migration routes from Cuba or Hispaniola. These groups may have lived in ephemeral camps or left only scattered traces, later replaced or absorbed by Lucayan arrivals. Their genes, however, persisted in mitochondrial lineages passed through generations. As researchers expand their sampling and recover more ancient DNA from caves and lesser studied sites, the idea of Bimini as a simple Lucayan outpost is giving way to a richer, more complex human timeline. While Lucayan culture dominates the visible archaeological record through shell tools, pottery styles and burial practices, Genetic data reveals subtle signs of blending beneath the surface. The maternal DNA diversity suggests that Lucayan society may have integrated women from neighbouring or earlier groups, whether through alliance, trade or conquest. Across the Bahama Islands, slight variations in cranial modification styles and pottery forms point to regional nuances that may reflect these hidden genetic differences. In Bimini, this cultural and biological patchwork implies a more fluid social history than once assumed, one shaped not just by migration but by interaction, inheritance and adaptation. The Y-DNA data from the Lucayan males was remarkably uniform. Most belonged to haplogroups QM902 and QZ781, both tracing back to early South American ancestors. In contrast, the mitochondrial DNA passed down through mothers told a more diverse story. Lineages included A2, B2, C1B and C1D, but also outliers like B2E and a new previously unclassified C1D subbranch. These findings suggest that while male ancestry remained consistent, the maternal side reflects more complex movements or integrations. The presence of rare and region-specific haplogroups hints at early admixture events or possibly distinct female lines preserved from ancient, pre-Lucayan settlers. Taken together, the archaeological fragments and the ancient genetic signals paint a radically different picture of Bimini's past. Rather than a clean story of Lucayan migration in the final centuries before Columbus, we now see signs of earlier layered human presence. These could have included Siboney-type foragers, short-term visitors from Cuba or Hispaniola, or even distinct populations that left little more than genetic breadcrumbs behind. The diversity of maternal haplogroups, especially the discovery of a previously unknown C1D sublineage, suggests that Bimini may have been a crossroads long before it became a Taino stronghold. Some early settlers may have disappeared culturally but endured biologically, their legacy carried quietly through mitochondrial lines. It forces us to reconsider how migration, settlement and identity unfolded in this part of the Caribbean. Instead of a linear history, Bimini's human story appears as a mosaic formed by overlapping waves of arrival, survival and subtle inheritance that reshaped what we thought we knew. The genetic surprises from Bimini raise more questions than they answer. Could pre-Lucayan burials still lie undiscovered in caves or sand dunes? How far back might human presence on these islands truly go? Future work will focus on obtaining older skeletal remains from less disturbed areas, improving DNA recovery techniques in tropical environments, and expanding comparisons to ancient genomes from Cuba, Hispaniola and northern South America. Isotopic analysis of teeth could reveal whether individuals were local or migrants, while more precise radiocarbon dating might uncover earlier occupation phases. The next breakthrough could be buried just a few metres beneath the sand. From its shimmering blue shallows to its quiet limestone ridges, Bimini holds stories deeper than the eye can see. Ancient DNA is helping reveal that the island's first inhabitants may not have been just Lucayan Taino settlers. They may have carried within them the echoes of forgotten peoples, long vanished but still present in strands of genetic code, 
As science uncovers what time has tried to bury, Bimini's past becomes more mysterious and more human. What other secrets lie beneath these islands? Let me know what you think in the comments, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out the Patreon to support more research like this.